And we're back. So in my last handful of episodes of The Misfortune, I've been utilizing my own rules, a one-page RPG I call Soul Oracle. It's been in the works for some time. It's been scrapped. It's been revised. It's been it's had different attempts at uh, using it for Shrek as an Oracle and, and Slash Or, uh, an actual solo RPG engine. Now, because it's been revised so many times, it's 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 kind of a Frankenstein model. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I I just crashed it completely, and I I brought it back to the forefront. I'm like, well, I'm going to try something new at this. And it's heavily inspired by many um, current systems I use on my, on this channel. So like you know, uh, lasers and feelings, uh, world of engines, traits of D and D, Karen. I mean, those are my top four that I've used a lot. And it's it's just, it's not really turning out the way I, I want it to, but it's definitely evolved. Now, <clears throat> using it for Misfortune has been interesting. It's been a really like more of a play test. And I didn't really expect Misfortune to become like a, a <laughs> how should I say, like a, like a, a test dummy for, um, a crash test dummy, I should say, for the Soul Oracle's flaws, which was combat. And because of because of um, the inspirations I I have, I've used from other engines like Lasers and Feelings, Karen, and World of Dungeons and D&D. Um, two of those, I I've always wished there was a combination of the two, and that was Lasers and Feelings and well, essentially, World of Dungeons. World of Dungeons is, is a very simple approach to a dungeon crawler style RPG. And I have it on my queue here. I'll show it up in a second as I open it. I love the design of World of Dungeons. The same guy apparently made lasers and, lasers and feelings. Here's the World of Dungeons. It's absolutely fascinating and a great design. And it is literally one page. That's the character sheet. And then you have the, it gives you equipment, it gives you hirelings, magic, a, a rule summary that's condensed into, into two columns. Though it doesn't have anything definitive on combat, but combat can possibly be resolved. Conflict can be resolved with the rolling the dice, which if you, again, have read the Lasers and the Feelings, rolling the dice is um, similar lingo that, he, that the creator used in that one. <laughs> And then it has a leveling system, which is fascinating too. But I'm not like leveling up character. That's kind of a hit and miss for me. Like I'll use it, but it's not really a priority because my my videos don't tend to be long term. Even though the misfortune has been 23 or so episodes so far, currently. Now, because this doesn't have a combat system at its core, it can it can really it can really use one, but again, the creator notes that right here, the rules are meant to be, the rules are yours to bend to your will. So you can take this and people have a custom, have tailored this or hacked this engine to involve a uh, combat system. And so one thing I've always been kind of a love or hate for me was attributes. Not on this one per se, but like at, on on all RPGs that have attributes, I like to use them. And there's times I don't like using them. I like to focus on narrative, and then there's times I like to focus on simplicity. I'm trying to find that balance between the two, and so let's move to uh, lasers, lasers and feelings. Lasers and feelings. I, I've talked about it plenty of times before. Heck, I've done a whole cyberpunk one shot with it for two and a half hours. Lasers and Feelings is a very intriguing uh, attempt, a very successful attempt. It's probably the most popular, one of the most popular one page RPGs out there on itch. That is a parody of Star Trek. And the person who made it is clearly a fan of Star Trek. It's well designed, it's professionally crafted, and it, it is very, very, very simple. It uses a uh, 1D6 system. It gives you, it's, it's fully narrative. There's some dice rolling with it, but I think this is a great like, it's a it's a great party game. It's good for like a one shot. 
I used it for, again for two and a half hours with the Cyberpunk um, Tower. I, I forgot the title of it. Uh, it was a tower based um, one shot RPG using Laser Athena. So, but Laser Athena doesn't have attributes, it doesn't have um, a combat system, it really doesn't have a combat system. It relies on this part here, rolling the dice, which is somewhat similar to, kind of similar to World of Dungeons. Again, the same person made it. So, <clears throat> this is where I found a one page RPG that blends the two. So, the creators of laser Lasers and Feelings let you modify it freely. And I did some searching, and I'm pretty sure I've talked about this a, a while ago, but it never really came back on my radar until now because I'm having that conflict. With my with misfortune and how to, how to how to run the game, and this is called Swords and Sorcery. So this is a modified version, a hacked version of Lasers and Feelings. Swords and Sorcery is basically that, but attuned for fantasy. Clearly, Sword and Sorcery. So, but it has a few extra perks for it to be used in a fantasy element. And not only does it change the, the, the character creation process, but it adds a few extra things to help define combat and conflict. So you can choose your character, you can do all that. You can do the usual, you can choose your ancestry, human, health, dwarf, gnome, orc, catapult, or make one up it says. Background, you have, all, you have the big ones. That one I probably would make one up too. But then there's an SNS number. So this one, similar to uh, Lasers and Fields, you choose a number where you have to roll over or under, depending on, on what kind of action you're taking. But then this is where the attributes come in. So this one, I have that blend of some attributes that World of Dungeons uh, heavily relies on, but not as much as D&D. But this one has an interesting little blend for me. Like the, the blend, it, it, it's, it's a great take from World of Dungeons. And it basically combines it, fuses it, does a fusion pile with uh, with lasers and feelings. So you have hit points, which is equal to three times your SNS number, whatever you choose. So if it's five, you're 15. Uh, you have uh, some notes, some uh, details on how to take damage. You have the spirit uh, for magic. You can cast spells. There's weapon damage. There's encumbrance even. Then you have the you have the usual back to normal character name, but then you have magic. So whoever did this obviously considered both the common things in, in fantasy, swords and sorcery. So then you have the usual. This is the practically the same as lasers and feelings, just kind of re um, terminology has been adjusted for fantasy. It's the usual. We don't have to go over that. Uh, you roll well basically you're under for souls or swords you roll over for sorcery you can use up to three dice three six depending on if you're if it's a basic roll if you're prepared and if you're an a trained an expert so it has the usual if you land on it it's a divine intervention you have like this sixth sense if you basically can uh, ask the gm a question but because i would use this for solo i'll be basically answer my own question and then running the game which we practically do ourselves but here's a great, a little, another addition. I think he took out the die of fate concept and he put it, he put this spells, and monsters. That is what I was trying to do with my engine. I, I had a ranking system based on battle die. But then my, my combat section was the most conflicting for me. I kept changing it. I kept on my own. Well, how, how do I make it fair, but also challenging? I just, I was all over the place. And again, I don't, I'm not scrapping them again. I'm keeping it in my, on my shelf. If I ever come back to it, I like to, obviously in this channel, I like to switch things up a bit every other video, trying to change it up, challenging myself for storytelling and the, and the mechanics of the game. But this one is really intriguing. But I'm not putting all my eggs in this basket. That's another flaw I have as a person. I, I When it comes to these videos, I have a tendency to put too much focus on one thing, and then I just kind of, it just falls apart. But luckily, I'm surprised. And misfortune has been going quite uh, quite some time because I, I, Record misfortune usually every other day, or I tried it within two to three days. I take my time on it, think about it, you know, between then at work, like what am I going to do? And then I, you know, I try it out. I try a different engine. So I found an engine to use basically for the next misfortune. 
I'm going to try this one. It, it's, it's really intriguing because combat is the other thing that I, I think I, I'll be able to do an element of not necessarily like uh, doing initiative and all that, but having a visual on the screen for you guys, not me typing it away, and then using this system to decide step by step what happens. Not just following the order, okay, you know, attack, 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 defend, 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 this guy attack. I'm going to do it narratively. So my character runs up to this guy and swings a sword. Okay, well, we're going to roll, we'll roll the dice and see what happens. If I fail, then the, the, character, the enemy will block it or will strike back. Do they strike back? That's where the oracle comes in. So <clears throat> I want to mention oracles. I've used a lot. I've used a lot of different types, um, different downloaded oracles, my own. And the one I always find myself going back to is the one page mickle. It's fantastic. It, it, I, this is what I like to put away for, uh, for a few times and come back to it because it's, it's just, it's really quite astonishing. But I don't like to overuse it. I will use the one page solo engine website, which is great, but it's, it's limited a bit uh, as far as it's very vague on, on its roles. So that, that's why I like to, I want to go back to this one. So I'm going to use this alongside the swords and sorcery. The downside to all this is poor Breglar has to, I have to keep adjusting him for the new rules. So we'll see how that goes. But that's what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to use swords and sorcery with mythic at the same time. And also, I almost forgot. I'm going to, something I've been absolutely failing to do was simplify my note taking. I have the tendency to go on these journaling rants in my notes, and it really does hog up the screen time for you guys when you're watching. I don't want to do that, but I have a tendency to do. It's just something I, I kind of just slip into. It's a habit. Now, that could be an excuse could be this is a solo journaling RPG, which in a sense it is. But I don't need to journal every single detail. Like my character turns to the right. I'm looking at der Dervish. I could just say that I ask Dervish a question. Not detailing, I turn to the right. I speak to say, Jervis, Dervish, how are you today? Dervish turns to me, and we roll for his reaction. He does not answer me. He scuffs. Like, I don't have to detail almost everything. I can just say, question for der Dervish, doesn't answer. That's it. I'm going to try that to simplify it because there's a there's a line in the fall there's a line between uh, it's a balancing act there's a, there's a, a how should I say because I didn't grow up playing RPGs uh, tabletop RPGs like traditional t dungeon crawlers compared to like really full fully implemented narrative driven RPGs like D&D I don't have familiar experience with both of them at the same like with both of them I've only been playing D&D for since last year. So I don't have the you know, 10, 20 plus years experience doing this stuff. So I'm trying to find something comfortable and I seem to be favoring simplicity over mechanics. When uh, my good friend Ryan loves mechanics in, in any RPG game, he really does. And he's even crafting his own um, system that's similar to Warhammer. Um, but for me, it's like, I, I know the basics of D&D &D, and I can hop in a game and play with someone. I could even GM to an extent, but I like the narrative side, but a simple narrative without bogging down. Like, I, I like the exploration concept of, of this process of solo RPG. The exploration is by far my favorite part. It's opening this world up, uh, one, looking inside and seeing just, just what happens and how my character can, can survive and, and interact with it. Uh, the character NPCs, the adversaries, the, the environment, etc. So, all in all, um, and oh, yeah, I'm sorry, this is an 8:30 workshop video because this one's more focused on RPG. My last video was making it mainly just about about AI, so it was not a workshop related video. It's something that was more of an update upcoming. So, um, using AI has has been, in my videos has been a ongoing treatment 
Uh, I do occasionally use it. I use it for the images on um, all my thumbnails. That's pretty evident. I don't do that artwork myself. I have no artistic skills as far as designing or drawing or painting or digital uh, digital rendering. Um, but yeah, I use AI for that. I use AI for sometimes store store related um, elements. Um, I've done it in the past. Many of my videos are DM. The AI is a DM or a, a player, uh, even as Oracle tables, etc. So again, it's a go to tool at times. It's not like it, it doesn't take take over my entire video, but um, it has been quite useful at times. So. And that's really it for um, this random episode of 830 workshop. Uh, I didn't have an intro for this because I at first I wasn't going to make this an 830 workshop, but now I'm, I'm talking about mythic and um, RPGs. I'm like, yeah, it's probably suitable to have this as an 830 workshop video. So in any event, I'll see you guys next time.